G'day folks and welcome back to the channel for episode number 23 of my Beginner's Primal Strike Elementalist playthrough. Uh, last episode, if you left a little bit early, uh, you wouldn't have seen me get the Stormrend Axiom. So this dropped from an Ethereal Totem. Um, these pretty much only drop from Ethereal Totems. There is a chance you can get them from other places, but it's very, very small. If you want Stormrend, and if you want to do a dual wielding or sword and board style primal strike build, you will need this. Um, if you want to get this, you need to go and do ethereal totems. And you have a small chance, I think it's something like 2-3%, to something like that, um, for this to drop. Now, I am planning on doing a dual wielding version of this at level 100. Obviously, that's going to take a little while to farm everything up for it. But having this already definitely helps out so this was a really nice drop now i've also got the mythical dawn guard gauntlets here that dropped from a totem uh, these are a straight upgrade to the gloves i'm wearing at the moment um, we're just going to ignore the fact that those gloves are level 55 i'm just going to pretend that didn't happen and we'll replace them in about half a level the other thing to look at is potentially these shoulders um The other thing to look at is potentially these shoulders, which are an upgrade in terms of armor. However, the resistance problem may mean that I can't use these. The Dawn Shard proc there is decent. It's not amazing. It's elemental damage rather than lightning. So that 4,200 is going to be split three ways between fire, lightning, and cold. And then the burning damage is obviously fire, which is no good. The 10% reduced target's damage is okay, um, however we get a decent chunk of that from the Olzorn's Wrath here. We got 28% and they don't stack, so the only time that would be relevant is if for some reason Olzorn's Wrath had not taken effect on something that was in melee range for example. Um, the other things to look at here, I'm pretty sure I already had all these before, but the Dawn Shard Horberk here um, has pretty much the same proc, well actually it's exactly the same proc as on the shoulders there, so putting both of these on could be good. This also has plus two to primal strike and plus three to temper, um, so compared to the Shroud of Illusion that I'm currently wearing, this is a very nice upgrade. The question will be, can I afford to lose the, uh, the Aether resistance in order to get it? I think I can. I can always take the Dread Skulls off of the Metal and Amulet, one or the other or both, and put Aether Souls back on there. So I think this is going to be a swap in half a level as well, so that one plus that one. And then this one, if I can, and honestly the Windborn Greaves here are good, but... Um, and, and that's a pretty big but, so we'll, we'll see if we can put those on, but, uh, but the rest of this stuff, really really good. I'm not going to use Stormrend just yet. Um, I'm going to keep sticking with the uh, Corvin Storm Halberd here. Speaking of which, uh, we did get revered with the um, the Mammoth Resistance. Sorry, I blanked on the name there for a second. And that has given me access to this two-handed weapon augment with 25 flat lightning damage. This is a massive boost to damage. If we just look at our Primal Strike here, the current augment gives 90% lightning damage and some percentage health. So if we look at 52 to 77,000, if I chuck that on there now, it's it's a meaningful 3 or 4% boost to damage. I probably did lose some health. I wasn't paying attention, so potentially I didn't. But um, there'll be a small change in health from that as well. The other thing we unlocked is the augments from Malmoth Resistance. This is the only one that's really kind of relevant at the moment. And that's just the health regeneration. Now I have one augment Kingsguard powder on the belt that I'm using. None of my other armor has any augments, so I'm just going to chuck these on there and just watch the health regeneration increase as we go. So we started out at about 3,900, something like that. Um, we just gained, let's say, conservative estimate, 350 odd health regeneration a second. So. Those will almost certainly be swapped out in favor of different resistance augments once I start putting on things like the Dawn Shard pauldrons and stuff like that. But for now, uh, 
almost four and a half thousand a second health regeneration is pretty dang good. Right, with that said, we are done here in Malmoth. Um, I will I will give you the respect of at least being sold. Uh, and it's time to head down here to the Forgotten Gods in the Corvin Basin. Now, I was saying in the last episode, oh yeah, I'm totally going to side with Dreeg. Um, unfortunately, uh, it turns out Dreeg was actually Bismail in disguise. Um, I'd already chosen to side with Bismail, probably because the quests are considerably easier. Um, oh well, such is life. Um, looks like we're up to the Vanguard of the Three, so let's just grab a few other quests here, if there are any. I think the Saleil section will probably have a couple. And we have Anorak and his brothers to deal with as well. Having already run to the Temple of Osea means that I have a little bit less kind of boring padding stuff at the start to do. Although, um, what are we up to now? Ten minutes yet? Six minutes of padding already. Okay, this quest here, this is a free quest. And before I do it, we're going back to Malmoth because I didn't buy the most important thing. The reason you want revered with the Malmoth resistance is the XP pots, and I didn't buy any. Because I'm a goober. Okay, just down here, Potion of Clarity, double XP for, what's that, an hour? Something like that. Um, it's probably not an hour, but whatever. I like them, they're good, they're expensive, be careful about when you use them. Don't use an XP potion, go do a single totem and then log off, that is a waste of 40,000 bits. Um, but do use them for large quest turn-ins, just general questing, all that sort of stuff. This quest is great. You accept the quest, you come over here, you go to the last tab, you buy a merit, quest complete, there you go, 10,000 XP. Give me my money back, thank you very much. That is the worst design quest in this game. I understand why they do it, but also it's just funny. Okay, so we actually only have to find the Salael Aspirants, and they are just north of the temple. So we'll be going there, and then Anorak's brothers are up here in the docks. So, um, yeah, let's get to it. Um, I don't need to worry about Devotion Shrines, so I don't need to worry about going into the temple. Um, although, you know what, let's do a quick run through. A level 94 weapon would not be a horrible thing to have. So let's just see if we get lucky. Maybe we can get one to drop. I'm not going to hold my... never mind. <laughs> if I had held my breath, I probably would have been fine. Charged of Frostbite is horrible. It may end up being an upgrade just because it's a higher level item. Let's have a look here. It's not, uh, I'll sell it, why not? But we can, we can just do a quick run through here. All of this stuff is now reputation, which I like. Uh, demonic Corvin Reaping of Celerity. Right. Okay, ritualist item. Hmm, nice. Just gonna, just gonna leave that on the floor. Um, uh, we can, we can skip all this. I'm just running through here looking for halberds, so if I don't find one, great. If I do find one, even more great. But not the end of the world. He's already standing up, so we'll go back down here. None of this is laying on down on the job, so any heroes? Nope, doesn't look like it. Alright, you're a hero though. So we'll go ahead and kill him. Uh, I mentioned this sort of towards the middle of the previous episode. Um, yesterday, or I guess it would have been earlier today, at the time of recording, uh, the patch notes for the, or the in-progress testing patch notes for the new patch dropped. And one of the things included is the whirlwinds, the wind devils, are becoming permanent, similar to the guardians of Imperium, which I'm super excited about. I don't know if anyone else cares, but these things having to be resummoned every 20 seconds uh, if you want your resistance shredding is the main reason why I haven't really done an elemental shaman build until now. Um, I still don't love that I have to push three buttons to summon totems and other stuff um, every time I run into a boss, but with them being permanent, 
that that basically makes this a two to three button build uh which is pretty good in terms of i guess we'll call it quality of life all right a couple of heroes here reflective is not great um it's fine but it's not great all right we got any shiny blue swords here they all look like well i guess they're axes they all look like they're fire you're fire you're fire yeah you're all fire all right and they're all dead so let's just uh go back outside and we'll start heading north now there is a quest uh, and a totem there too Ooh. i like me some totems uh, there's a quest just out here. This is going to be the Saleil Aspirants. Um, it's going to be the next little section, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, I've come out too early. Um, that's what she said. But uh, this totem here, um, also this guy. You are made out of reputation, so you've got to go. Yeah, look at all that lightning. It's crazy amounts of lightning. I think it hits everything in range, and with all these little wormy things, it just blasts your entire screen. It's probably blasting my frame rate as well, but it is what it is. We'll just keep blapping these things and uh, sucking up that reputation. Not to mention the loot. Uh, we've seen a couple of blues on the ground so far. If I could get some purples, that'd be great. Nope, just blues. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Dawn Guard Gauntlets. Okay, another pair of those. That's fine. Uh, da, 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 Circuit of Mogdrogan Mog could be worth a look, but I don't think so. And we can just talk to these guys. Um, here we go. I've been looking for you. Get in the rift. Done. Uh, right. Now, I've already put the, uh, the stuff on here, so I'm hoping these suck, and they do. Um, I'll sell them. So Imhona here, it's got to go, Spider Silk Holberg, thank you very much. Thank you mother for the rabbits, and uh, thank you for the iron bits. Right, so we're done with that bit, uh, I am actually going to go back because there is a location here that I want to check. Assuming I'm not remembering wrong, uh, nope, I'm remembering wrong, never mind, as we were. We will continue onwards and upwards towards the dock. Um, let's go down there. Circo of Mogdrogan is pet things, yeah. This is the location I was thinking about, and it looks like... Yep. Chest is not there. That's fine. Alright, so we picked Bismil. We're pretty much done with the first section now. Uh, the quest is to go to the Vanguard of the Three. So this is what I mean when I say that the Bismil quests are much easier. You can complete all of the first section just in the temple, uh, the Temple of Osea, that is. Um, so you can get through the first part of the uh, the Bismil section very, very quickly. Um, Rhyme Tom, hmm, cold stuff. If you were doing the Saleil section, then you have to go to uh, a couple different places. And if you're doing Drig, you have to go... Um, actually a couple other different places, but either way, Bismil's quests are the easiest of the three, so if you just want to smash through them, then then pick Bismil, I guess. Cowl of the Paragon, the Corvin Worm, all this really juicy loot. One of the best things is getting to sort of like 91, 92, and then you start getting the level 94 stuff dropping. But you still have a reason to be out in the world doing stuff that's not just, oh, let's go do totems. Which honestly is enough, but uh, but having a reason to be out here doing stuff is also good. As long as we're here, as long as we're here, is it this one? It is this one, isn't it? Yeah, here it is. As long as we're here, let's go unlock the dungeon. Or at least get the first part of the... Uh, the dungeon unlock. So that, just in that little pass there, um, will take you over here to, apparently it's called the Forlorn Bastion. Um, I didn't know it was called that, but um, there you go, the Forlorn Bastion. And inside here is one part of three little hidden seals that will open up the 
Tomb of the Magi, which Eldritch Totem, this is going to be fun. Uh, which is the Skeleton Key dungeon for Forgotten Gods. Um, it is by far the most difficult uh, in terms of monster difficulty, but it's also by far the easiest to navigate. Um, Searing of Binding. Damn, why can I never find this sort of stuff when I need it on characters that would actually use it? Um, oh, it is what it is. Let's chuck that in there. <laughs> that looks so good when they have all those little maggots all over the floor and they all get zapped. Looks really nice. Alright, so we walk through here. Um, oh, they've got these guys. Uh, the law notes in here detail the, uh, the ceiling of the Tomb of the Magi and why and what's in there. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, uh, go ahead and read the law. Um, anyone else want to reanimate? Maybe give me a nice new stick to beat things with? I think I will have to actually farm a new one at this point. Um, if I can get a Skyfallen of Alacrity, I know I've mentioned this in just about every episode so far, but if I can get one of those, that'll be my forever weapon until I get the Altos weapon. Though having said that, I mean, do I even need to bother? Or just go, just go get Altos. Alright, didn't need to kill any of that stuff, apparently. That's fine. So we've got Captain... Captain Fahod? Ford? Fahod. The Captain's Journal. Um, which is free XP, so I like that. And we're coming up on the boss. Um, I think. I think the boss is in here. It's been a while since I've done these quests, so... Um, don't 100% remember exactly the details, but I'm pretty sure there's a griffin boss at the end of here. And he's going to have one of the... or a third of the seal. That's a lightning stick. Come on, give me something nice. Frostborn of Thunder. That is not nice. I do not like what you've just done. If I could bring you back to life, I would kill you again for dropping that. Pretty sure that's not an upgrade. That Why is that an upgrade? <laughs> Why is that better? Um, I guess it's going to be the base damage, but that is, unfortunately, an upgrade. Um, the Ice Spike proc, I guess, is alright as well. Uh, well, you know what that means. As much as I hate to use a cold weapon on a lightning build, um, game says that's an upgrade, so let's actually just see... Yeah, that's an upgrade without even putting the, uh, the stuff on it. Wow. Alright, okay. Oh, it is what it is. Um, and I want... Yeah, that one. Chuck that on there. And, uh... Don't clear my rift. Let's head down here to DC. I'm gonna melt the old one, grab my seal of the skies, put it on the new one. Keep the hat on. There we go. And we've just upgraded, like, what, 15%, 10%, something like that. And it's a cold weapon. Look at all that cold damage. Okay, well, 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 it is what it is. Let's go get our seal. All right, we're going to start seeing little cold spikes, these things. Yeah, here we go. Jaren Thor the Sandstorm. I don't think you're really going to be able to do much of anything. We did also just hit level 94, so we have some gear swaps to make. Um, face Guard of Perdition. How convenient. <laughs> and we have actually the second seal of Morganeth. Um, I'm just going to ignore that Perdition thing. I say nothing about it. <laughs> Alright, so, um, I want this chest piece, definitely. I want these gloves, definitely. They can just, yep, you know what, destroy. Um, the Windborn Greaves, do I want these? I kind of do. Uh, plus three to Heart of the Wild is going to be this one? Yeah. 
All right, let's chuck those on. That's going to be more resistance. Um, Dawn Shard Horberg, sure, why not? Or um, Pauldrons, rather. All right, what do we got for resistances? Um, we've taken a lot of bleeding stuff off. I may have to leave these shoulders on for now. So that's going to fix all of our resists, except for a little bit of bleeding. Um, bleeding res, I think I can get some from the coven, so let's go do that. Yeah, let's go to the coven here. Um, actually, before I do that, is there any more of you guys that would like to stand up and maybe have a new lightning stick for me? Because if there are, I would like to meet you. Unfortunately, there is not. Seal of Destruction. Okay, okay. Alright, I probably shouldn't be messing with these guys with uh, unmaxed resistances. So let's get out of here. Also, something about armor absorption and um, how that's not maxed out anymore either. So let's just go ahead and head up to the coven real quick. So I need, what's that, 14%? Yeah, 14% bleeding res. Um, and if I swap this in... Let's just see if I can get there. Um, Coven, I believe, has elemental resistance augments as well. So bleed is going to be this one, 10%. I would need six of these. Okay, I can do that. Um, and then I would also need one elemental, so that's seven. In terms of augments, I may be one short. Let's let's just see. Um, worst case, I can put a silk swatch on the on the shoulders. So I am definitely fine here. Um, let's go chuck that that one on the boots, pants, chest, gloves, shoulders, helmet. Okay, yeah, so Silk Swatch on the shoulders, um, Scaled Hide on the chest, and we are absolutely golden. Right, don't clear the rift. Do not clear the rift. I swear, if I clear the rift, I'm not going to do anything, but I'll be very disappointed. <laughs> Alright, I need my Mark of Monk Dragon back, so they are getting melted. There we go. Uh, I'm going to keep this one here for the add-on. So that can go on the chest. And then I want... Um, did I miss one? What do we got here? Everything has an augment, I think. Does... Um, I'm way short on elemental, aren't I? Cold. Okay. We can fix that uh, by taking the... I think the anti-venom off and putting on a... Whatever the cold version is. I don't really want to do that. Um, and I can't do that actually, so... Pretend I didn't say that. Um, Silk Swatch, do I have one? S-I-L. I do not. Let's go make one. One resilient plating, one Silk Swatch later. That can go on my shoulders. Bleeding is fine. Piercing is fine. Okay, I need to come up with some elemental resistance from somewhere. I know exactly where. I know I know exactly where I'm going to get that. Uh, I don't need this anymore. Okay. I know exactly, exactly where I'm going to get that from. What... That one's got a bleeding resist on it. Okay, I'm gonna hang on to that. All right, all right, we're under control. I know it might look, might not look like it, but trust me, trust me, it's going to be fine. Because I know something that you guys maybe don't know. Um, is this guy? That's right over here, and then we go. Nope. It's gotta be this way. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so I'm running around with less than capped cold resistance, which is a really, really bad idea. I don't think I'm going to run into much in the way of cold damage out here. 
and we've just picked up a bunch of procs, which is really nice. I'm going to avoid the... Nah, why not? I'm going to kill him. I'm going to say I'm, I'll avoid the Coven Titanivore, but uh, you know what? Shouldn't have to avoid him. Sundered, don't care. Doesn't matter. Down he goes. Alright, so my brilliant plan is about to come to fruition. I hope. <laughs> It's entirely possible that I'm I'm guessing wrong here. So uh, one of the things I'm wearing is the empowered Fetten mask, and the mythical version is just around the corner here. Now the mythical version I'm pretty sure is the same as the empowered version, but with more stats and a, an extra couple of lines here. So this elemental resist number should be bigger. It is, but not by much. Okay. And we get some offensive ability. Well, it is bigger. That's what she said. So I am going to chuck that on. Um, bleeding, 7% over cap. And I need to come up with 19% cold resistance from somewhere. Which I think I can do by crafting. I may have just destroyed my mark of Mogdurgan though. Which is going to be annoying. Actually, I'll put it on the gloves. Alright, so cold res. Dense fur here is 20%. Um, I'm not... Well, I can't use that anyway, but yeah, here we go. Dense fur. This can go on all armor, so I could... I think I'm going to have to swap that one out, and I'll have to go to the coven for a new augment for my bleeding res. Okay, we're, we're alright, we're alright. Um, keep the item. Resistances are maxed-ish. Keep the add-on here. Go, you've got a component. We go to the coven. Coven will sell me another bleeding augment. Come see what's left of my wares. Uh, that one. Oh yeah, capped everything. All right. In terms of shredding, what am I worried about? I think it's going to be elemental and poison. Yeah, so elemental. I'm a little worried about having my elemental res shredded and poison as well. But otherwise, we're looking real pretty. We just picked up a bunch of damage procs. Um, yeah, looking real good. Okay, what do we need in the docks here? Now, there is a treasure trove in here, but I don't really need it. Anorax Brothers, I guess? We'll go do them. Don't need the Devotion Shrine over in the corner. I know there's a treasure trove in here, but I'm probably not going to find that, let's be honest. I don't have the map up. I don't really know where it exactly it is, so that'll be fine. Pick up the blues. Alright. Okay, there is Anorak. So I'm just going to drop a rift here. And we're going to continue onwards here. Grab the next rift gate in the area. What are you? Oh, you can stay there. So we'll run over here. We'll grab this rift gate. Then I'll rift back to Anorax Brothers' little hole in the ground. We'll go deal with that whole mess, and then we'll be on our way. Yep, four Dreeg, indeed. Okay, let's go and uh, do the dang thing. So there is in here, I believe, a an exalted shrine or an exalted uh chest chances of me finding it decently low chances of me um never mind let's <laughs> say chances of me just walking straight past it pretty good um it turns out i underestimated myself which is i guess a good problem to have uh, you're dead 
brother sent me. Yep, I'll take care of the big bad guy at the end. Okay. So, boss guy at the end here does a lot of cold damage. Um, that's the main reason I was particularly worried about cold resistance. Um, not the only reason, because there's a lot of cold damage in general. A lot of elemental damage through the Forgotten Gods areas. Um, but definitely this boss was the one I was thinking of. Ooh, totem. I like totems. Everybody follow me, and then I can blow you up in one place. Is that just... oh, here we go, gargoyles. Nice. Okay, yep, keep coming. Keep coming. I got some lightning for each individual one of you. Okay, and in terms of drops, kind of, kind of not great. Um, yeah, not gonna lie. The, um, the drops are not great. Okay. Oh, it is what it is. Um, let's see, the blueprint and be on our way. Alright, here's the boss. So I'm gonna clear the area, uh, at least partially. And then we'll go whack the boss. The thing you gotta watch out for is this attack. That one right there. Uh, you do not want to blitz into that with low cold resistance. It will one-shot you. Ask me how I know. How do you know, Pikus? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's because I did that with my very first dervish. I blitzed into him from back here. And he turned around, fired that attack off, and I went from full health to dead. And that was the end of my very first dervish character. Granted, that was on normal difficulty, but still, that shotgun attack is not something you want to eat in the face. Um, especially not with 20% below cap resistances. Uh, right, we can skip this fight. We can skip that fight. And this little section here, uh, I'm going to grab the book just to get transmuting unlocked in ultimate. But aside from the book, we don't need anything in here. So, should be able to just, uh, grab the book and be on my way. I mean, obviously I have to kill Screech here. June Fiend Slicer, that'll sell nicely. Um, the other thing I can start doing as well, I don't think I really have the Celestial Lotuses for it, but this character can probably farm the, uh, the Celestial Totems and get a few of those. Uh, do you stand up? Yes, yes. New lightning stick. Come on, not cold damage this time. Charge to thunder. That's an upgrade. I think, I think I'm gonna not upgrade that one though. Um, uh, I probably should. I probably should. I definitely should. More damage is more damage. Like, there's no two ways about it. I just really don't want to have to go back to the coven, get a new augment, go back to Devil's Crossing, rip the component off the old one, yada yada yada. Yakety schmackety, all that sort of stuff. This is me being lazy. And I really shouldn't do it. Am I going to do it though? That's, that's the actual question. Um, Alright, okay. I've talked myself into it. We're gonna go do it. I really should just do this anyway, but I'm doing it begrudgingly because I can't be bothered. All right, um, I've gone to the wrong place, haven't I? Let's try that again. And I just cleared my rift as well, so I hope I grabbed that rift gate. Otherwise, this just took a lot longer. Uh, lightning. What? Let's buy a few of those. Chuck that on there. Chuck you up there. Use this inventor rather than the other one. Keep the pad on. Alright, what are we up to now? We're up above 100,000 a hit. Which is pretty good. Alright, how badly did I screw up? <laughs> uh, okay, alright. That's alright. 
I didn't screw up. Just for a change. Just for something different, you know? For Bismil. Uh, let's go kill Ganavakar. Why not? He's got a cool name. I've got a cool name. I mean, what's not to love about Sparky? I think we'll get along great. We're just going to uh, ignore the fact that he sunders, does poison damage. I'm worried about my poison resistance. None of that matters. It's fine. We'll just dodge that sunder. And down he goes. Easy peasy. Picked up damnation. Chill Bora. Let's not get hit by the poison nova if we can. Um, what did I just get? <laughs> so damnation, doom bolt, and reaping strike. Okay. That item looks extremely, uh, what's the word? Schizophrenic, perhaps? Maybe it's just, uh, versatile. We'll, we'll use the positive, power of positive thinking. It's a very versatile item. It can be used for a lot of things. Um, other words I was thinking of were, uh, obviously schizophrenic, but, uh, unfocused would be another one. I don't know, there's probably some really good build out there that uses it that I just haven't seen. Okay, so seal number two should be over here. And by should be, I mean it is. I know it's here. Seal number two, just over here on the left, you'll see the, uh, the crumbling wall here. Did I just get rooted? I don't know what happened there. It stopped moving for some reason. Alright, and we're going into this little, uh, what would you call this? It's a little side dungeon, I guess. It's a couple floors here from memory. There's, um, there's lore notes in here, again, describing how and why this little area exists. Um, yeah. The lore notes through here are, are actually pretty good. Um, I, I'd say go look them up, for sure. Go look them up on the interwebs, uh, or or um, come through here yourself, actually, and just read all the law notes. They're pretty good. There is, I think in this area, there's a little secret hidden section. I could be in the wrong area in my head again. Um, just have a quick route around over here. Is it this one? Yeah, here it is. Hidden spoils, my favorite. Plus one ancient armor plate. Totally worth it. <laughs> No, you almost never get anything good out of those chests, so I'm not really surprised. I think there's... is there an exalted stash in here as well, or am I misremembering? Probably I am. I see that totem though. I'm gonna do that. Absolutely. Okay, let's turn the loot off just so I can see what's going on. At least, you know, a little bit. It is kind of hard with this build. I'm not gonna lie. There is so much lightning and goop on the floor. The Hand Guards of Justice. Um, these are pretty good. If you look at that two set bonus, 15% increased armor. If you happen to get the gloves and the shoulders, they are pretty good for using on just about any build. Um, I mean, good luck, but yeah, definitely, definitely a good set to have just the two piece, even if you're not using uh, anything else on the item. They're, they're pretty good to have. Alright, floor two. Or uh, the Howling Depths. Can't remember if it's this floor or the next one where the boss is, but there's going to be a boss. And he's going to have a seal. And just like any other seal, uh, we're going to go and club him. I think it's going to be in the next area, isn't it? Yeah, that's fine. And I've actually already missed the, uh, the third seal because it's back right next to where I picked up the Fetan mask. So I'm gonna have to go back for that, but that's right next to a rift gate. I can I can pick that up at any time really. Okay, here is Halanx the Forgotten. Now Halanx happens to have a legendary item all of his own, which he has decided that he doesn't want to drop today. Um, I can't remember what Halanx's head does, I'd have to look it up. But, uh, that's fine. So we have, potentially, a new stick. Nope. Is there going to be a couple of those? There is. Can I get a new lightning stick? That'd be great. 
Nope, no lightning stick for me. They all fire. You know what? I'm gonna kill them. I know for a fact that none of these has the weapon that I want, but I just wanted to see if they had the, uh, one of the other versions. Alright, we're done here. Let's head on out. I hope this pops me right back to where I was at the start. Pretty close, actually. Um, yeah. Pretty dang close. Alright. So from there, we can just more or less head back where we were. And out the other side. And then uh, we'll be at the Vanguard of the Three. Which is where I wanted to be anyway, so that's very, very nice. Alright. Lovely jubbly. Let's see if the big bad doggy's home today. I'm gonna check down south here just to, uh, basically just to confirm whether he is or is not in the area. It's useful information for later. Yep, there he is. So here's Grimoire, the Packhound Alpha. And, uh, and that was Grimoire, the Packhound Alpha. Bonemonger's Shoulder Guard. I really love being, like, level 92. And just dropping purple items all over the place. And actually caring about them, because it's not the one purple item that I need to finish a build. It's really good. Alright, I'm gonna head back up the top here. And see if... Anybody else wants to play, but more importantly... Uh, there's a nice little, just here, see this tree? This tree right here. If you walk behind it, and go up the ledge here, there's another Hidden Spoils, which, I mean, we've already determined that Hidden Spoils are the best kind of spoils. And that's pretty much it. It's kind of all that matters out there. <laughs> Alright, uh, we did hit 95 as well, so uh, do I put three more points in Heart of the Wild for some more health? Um, percent health regen is probably not as good as flat. I think we go the flat health regen. So I am tempted by tempo here, and if we put one more point in here, what do we get? Nothing that really matters. I'm thinking damage. Yeah, I think tempo. Let's get some more damage. Alright, we have finally made it to the Vanguard of the Three. It's taken forever, but we're finally here. Let's go ahead and sell all this. What was that? Just sold a component. Uh, symbol of Soleil. Literally don't care. In fact, you know what? You can have it. Alright, so by Scylla, the Matron of Rifts. There we go. I'm pretty sure Bicilla there is actually Bismil's avatar, same as Sagon here being the Soleil avatar. I don't have any proof of that, but I kind of suspect that to be the case just based on the results of later quests. This is also fun. So on ultimate, if you stand in this for long enough, and you take constant damage from this, but if you stand in it for long enough, it'll spit out a nice weapon. Um, pretty sure this is Chill Heart. Yep, yeah, there it is, Chill Heart. So this one is Cold Damage, Lightning and Fire converted to Cold. This is the offhand that I'm using for my Primal Strike Trickster. So I will actually hang on to that and see if it's an upgrade for him. But that's how you get it. Um, you can, if you have any kind of healing powers or healing abilities, you can just stand in there until you run out of potions or blood of dregs or whatever you're using. Step out, wait for the cooldowns, step back in, do the same again. Um, relatively easy. Alright, so we've got the crumbling wall here. Grab our free loot, why not? Another hidden spoils. And as I've already established this episode, hidden spoils are the best kind of spoils. Let's head on over here. Now, I checked up here against this little wall for an exalted stash. It wasn't there. So now I know where it's going to be, and I'm heading over that way because I want it. 
it has a guaranteed blue or better item and I need that in my inventory immediately. So here it is. Exalted Stash. Void Walker footpads are not really what I had in mind. Um, but that's fine, that's fine. Uh, right, so this section we're about to go into here, this Temple of... is it Abid? Yeah, Temple of Abid. This is the best area in the game for farming reputation with all three of the Witch Cults. In my opinion. You may find somewhere better. I like this one. The reason why will become apparent when we get down to the second floor. But even just here, you're going to get heroes all through here. You can get heroes outside as well. It's right next to a rift gate as well. We'll show, or we'll see that when I come out the other end. Uh, you don't have a lightning stick, so you're no good. Um, there is, like I said, you can get heroes all through this temple. There's also potentially a totem in here which is going to be more heroes. Totem would have been here if it was going to exist. Fortunately, it's not going to exist, so... R.I.P. my totem, I guess. Alright, and this part here, this is where the magic happens. Let me just... Uh, actually, why am I fighting these idiots? Let's go downstairs. So, we have got the Risen Stone Temple Guardian. And just over here we have got Inashkor, the Temple Guardian. And these two, plus another one of these Guardians on the other side, are... wait for it... 112 reputation for all three cults each. So this is 336 reputation for all of the cults. And depending on how, how good or bad your build is, you may have to split these up. Corbin Burning Halberd, yeah. Um, but there's another 112 for all of them, and then I'm pretty sure they're all 112. The, the Griffin may be slightly more, but I think it's 112. We'll find out here in a second, I guess. Yep, 112. So um, you can come in here, kill these, reset. Then if we just poke our head outside here, What you are going to see is the Ruins of a Bead Rift. That's where we went in. So you run that, you run downstairs, you kill any heroes along the way, obviously. Then you kill those three bosses downstairs. And you rinse and repeat. You get 300 at least. Um, generally speaking, you'll end up with probably around 500 on average. If you get the totem, um, each hero is worth 52. If you get like eight or nine heroes, you can have like a thousand reputation a run. So it's really good for farming reputation. And uh, that's what I'll be doing when I get to the end of Forgotten Gods. I'll kill Korvac and then I'll have a little bit of reputation left to grind. That's how I'm going to do it. Okay, how are we doing for regen now? Six and a half thousand a second. So that's obviously going to be with um, Giant's Blood active. But that's still pretty good. Three, three and a half seconds to go from death's door to full health. You cannot complain about that. Uh, chosen visage. Eh. Okay, ancient eldritch totem. Right, I'm going to clear the area for this one. Because uh, this could be a little rippy. Here we go. Uh, let's turn that off. Kill the arcane first, always. Ignore everything else, just kill the arcane. Um, this was actually a pretty tame totem, I think. Chill Surge Ring. Yeah, none of this is looking particularly spicy. Searing of Ferocity on the totem, on the uh, Storm Halberd. So that can just, you know what, stay on the floor. Uh, just up here, I don't normally come up here, but uh, up here there is another hidden spoils which if you're into that sort of thing uh, and I am then uh, you can get some here and then if we just head north here I think there's a chance to get a treasure trove somewhere along here I think it's actually at the bottom so let's, let's head back down here and just see if the treasure trove exists in this area eh, it doesn't look like it alright if I don't find it I don't find it Not ready. 
So the next place I want to check for the treasure trove is just up ahead. These fat guys have got way too much health. Uh, I was checking over there. I think that might be it. Or no, it's over here. Um, or at least it can be over here. It's, it's not, but it could be. Now, I've already killed the big bad cold doggy at the start of the... Just before I got to the vanguard of the three. If I had not, he is likely to be just here. Uh, because I did, he's obviously dead and he can't be there. This camp here as well uh, can be a little rippy, so just be careful coming in here. And my treasure trove is not here either. So I came to check against this back wall for the treasure trove. It's not there, so... Um, rip, I guess. Okay, we've got another rift gate coming through just here. Got some uh, Kaiman's chosen idiots over there. I mean, I mean Kaiman's chosen friends. Uh, what do we got? Return to Anorak. Speak with Kaizen. Actually, let's let's just uh, go turn some quests in. Just while I'm thinking about it. So we have got Anorak's brothers to deal with here. Also, nope, already done that. Or didn't get the quest. Hello? So Anorax Brothers, farewell. What do we get? Mark of the Myrmidon. Yeah. Uh right. Kaisen at the where are we? He's gonna be down here, isn't he? Oh no, here he is. So this guy wants to know about the more of is it more of Enac? I've already found it. Just east of the Corvin Sands. Turtle Shell is maxed out. That's what I like to see. Among other things. Um, Thunder Touch Braces. No. Okay. And I think we're done with quests here. There's my transmute unlock. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. <laughs> Okay, return to Bicilla at the Vanguard of the Three. Speak with Kaisen at the Conclave of the Three. Where is... Oh, that's this guy up here. Okay. This is going to be your aspirants, isn't it? Ah, uh, yep. What is it? Consider it done. What are we doing here? Uh, speak with Salil recruits. That's these guys downstairs. Right. So we can kill these guys pretty easily. Um, all right. You're still fighting for some reason. And you fought well, you've proven your worth, and we are allowing them to stay. Why? No idea. <laughs> okay, they are worthy. Don't expect me to go rescue them. That's level 96. So we'll take another point in temper, another point in physique. And I think we're done now. So, yep. We're off to the vanguard of the three. I'm going to turn this quest in, then we're going to go get the third part of the seal. What a wonder. Hmm. The witch gods are united. And yes, I am ready to lead the assault. Right. Let's go back to the... Uh, da, 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 which one is it? Coven Sands. Yeah, good. So Corvin Sands, we'll head over this way. And we're going to go in into the moor. Carmax notes. Um, I think he actually goes in, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. There's definitely a few sausages short of a barbecue, uh, but that's fine. I'm not here for him anyway. Um, you can fight all this stuff, and if you haven't got the achievement, um, something like Sands in the Desert, um, this is a really good place to get kills, because all these tiny little maggots, they all count. Even the ones that come out of the bodies of the larger beetles, they all count as one kill. So getting, was it 200,000 monster kills or something ludicrous like that? Uh, running through here, 
is the fastest way. The easiest way is to go AFK in the uh, the Tomb of Morganeth near those blue portals with a build that can kill them without pushing buttons. But, you know, that's cheating. <laughs> I guess technically the easiest way would be to download a character that's already got that and just log it in one time. And voila, done. But that is, that is definitely cheating. I would never suggest to do that. Last words of Harod. The, um, this is another section for the seals to unlock the, uh, the Morganeth tomb. And so there is, again, lore notes here that, uh, kind of explain what was going on. Basically, the guy who was trying to seal the tomb away betrayed everybody who was, uh, adventuring with him. He took them to places where the seal was supposed to be. And then he more or less killed everybody who was with him. So as they couldn't ever tell anyone where they were. And then we come along and just find it anyway, so... Betrayed for no reason. Ooh, you look shiny. Not as shiny as me, though. Alright, let's go down. This should be the last floor. Now, this beetle, um, who I'm pretty sure is just around the corner here. Yep, this beetle is not one you want to underestimate. Or misunderestimate, or whatever word you want to use. You want to be careful of this guy. Don't stand in the goop. And uh, and just be careful. Because the goop he puts on the floor is also kind of bad. So don't stand in all that. Um, infinity regen or not. You don't want to uh, you want don't want to be digested by a dead beetle. Alright, let's get out of here. How are we doing for time? Not even an hour yet. Lovely. We got plenty of time to continue with the second half here. Alright, so that's where it spits you out. So you go in there, come out here, and then we just, um, we just skip forward. So we now have all three parts of the seal. Um, they don't join up together. Uh, do you need the quest for that? I'm not sure. You may need the quest in order to actually uh, access the tomb. I'm going to try it, and we'll see. Um, we'll see if you actually need the quest. I have a feeling you don't, but you may need the quest in order to give the three parts to Riggs, and then uh, he'll give you the full seal or something like that. I don't. Know. I don't. Know. We'll f we'll find out. But regardless, I have all three of them. The other thing of note as well is um, the the Tomb of Morganeth, or um, Morganeth's Folly, Tomb of the Magi, whatever it's called. The Skeleton Key Dungeon, there's actually nothing in there that I want, aside from just generic loot. I don't think there is any drops from there that are good for this build. Um, I'm really struggling to come up with any, so... I'm just going to go ahead and say there aren't any. Aside from, like I said, just generic loot is always good to get. Alright, this is a lot of statues out here. Sorry, this was a lot of statues out here. <laughs> Let's head inside, and we've got... Is this the Dusk Reaper? Yeah, I think it is. What do you got? Vengeful. Hmm. Monsters do a little bit extra damage. I'm okay with that. Alright, so the Dusk Reaper is going to spawn in the middle here. I'm going to go ahead and clear the middle platform out, uh, which means Totem's got to go, just in case I accidentally click on it in the middle of the boss fight. We got Blessed Torch, Bill Gothian's Carnage, and the Skyreach Bulwark. Lovely shield there with a lightning theme. I wonder. If we put this on. As well as this shield. Let's have a look. Uh, Primal Strike is 71 to 106. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, we won't be doing that. It was a nice thought, but um, yeah, no. 
All right, let's go. Let's go spawn the boss. I don't think I need to worry about the trash. All of that should pretty much die in the AOEs. So here we go. We've got the Dusk Reaper. And like I said, everything else should more or less just die as it comes up to me. And yep, that's what's happened. Scorpius Pamela. These are actually not horrible um, for like a, an Acid Goals Ritualist pet. Um, the rolls on this one are, yeah, they're not great. But um, I am using one of those on my Acid Ritualist. Who I haven't played. Oh, I haven't played that guy for ages. I have too many characters. All right, so let's go see, um, we'll, we'll get the rift, so go over here, come up top here and we'll grab this rift gate. You guys could stop following me, that'd be amazing. So if we come up here, grab this rift gate, then I'm going to go back and just see if I can unlock the tomb here. I have a feeling you need to have the quest from Rid. From rigs. Initially I was thinking you wouldn't need to, you just collect the seals and then go stuff them in the hole and voila, in you go. But now I'm thinking you actually do need to be on the quest from rigs. Why? Don't know. Just, just a feeling. Uh, nope, I'm wrong. We're in. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. So I'm going to go in and just grab the rift gate here. Um, this is one of the best views in this game. Like you're on this massive stone bridge over a lava river. This is really cool. Uh, this is is not so cool. But hey, it's still amazing view. All right. Let's head on in. So the path of the damned gives way to the lost oasis. Three guys. Any any lightning? No, no, no lightning. I'm just going as far as the rift gate here, and then I'm going to back out a little bit. What do we got. You look like you might be made out of reputation. Hey, he was. How about that? All right, and actually at this point, I'm going to end the episode here. So thank you all very much for watching. See you in the next one where we finish Forgotten Gods. And goodbye for now.